Welcome to my course electrochemical energy storage and uh, we are now in module number 5 where uh, I am describing the characteristics of commercial lithium ion cells and this is lecture number 23 uh, where I will describe the major characteristics of commercial lithium ion cells their cell performance and degradation phenomena. Uh, one thing that is uh, quite clear you know that uh, uh, although we uh, some of the groups uh, we are working on lithium ion batteries uh, in India we do not have uh, uh, any company uh, who really makes there are few who are uh, trying to make or established a process line to uh, prepare this lithium ion cell which is so important because you cannot import the lithium ion cells. So, here we will look at the what are the companies and which kind of uh, cell and battery pack module they actually uh, sell it to us, uh, but uh, honoring this uh, uh, make in India initiative uh, I am very much interested to see that we have lot of lithium ion battery manufacturer in our country. So, this is just a passing remark I felt that I should share with you. Half cell characteristics of the negative and positive electrodes for determining the nominal voltage that is important I should select the positive and negative electrode as well as the electrolyte the same old figure which I have described so many times that the homo lumo band they should be larger the difference is should be larger than the chemical potential of cathode and anode uh, the VOC is related to that. So, that must be taken care of and then we will talk about uh, the characteristics of some commercial cells and uh, I have given uh, the references here and you can go to their website and uh, you can uh, you are now in a position to understand the what is nominal voltage, what is uh, the energy density, what is capacity, what is power density, what are the different shapes of cells. Uh, what are the typical applications, what are the chemistries that is involved in making the cell everything uh, if you go through the previous lectures along with the fundamental part which I have uh, touched so that you can understand that what are the science behind uh, this kind of requirements I am pretty sure that you will be able to understand that in what way uh, these companies are selling the cells uh, throughout the globe. So, the characteristics of some of the commercial cells that I will introduce, then the cell performance evaluation that is important the capacity, the discharge characteristics, the temperature characteristics, the energy and power densities. So, that uh, how uh, to evaluate that or what to evaluate, so that will be talked about and then how do they charge the commercial cell. So, charging and uh, is not that simplified discharging is even more complicated that is guided by the application that uh, um, that is for you are looking for this cell. So, I have made no attempt about the discharge, but uh, I leave it on you on you know, imagination that uh, what kind of the discharge profile that you may have in your application sometimes you need to accelerate sometimes you need to have a constant cruising speed sometimes you want to deaccelerate, so the discharge current will vary and how it will affect your uh, standard uh, discharge profile that usually in laboratory you measure in a constant current, so that is a matter of study, so that is that is uh, not attempted here. Now, if you see uh, the uh, different types of voltage profile uh, this is the charge part and uh, again from here we are discharging. So, this is you know that initially we apply a constant current um, and uh, for charging and then uh, put a load back uh, and discharge again through a constant current. So, uh, if you see the profile initially this is kind of charging profile goes like this and then you discharge like this. So, the time that you calculate from here where the charging completed and discharging ends. So, that time you need to calculate the capacity which is I into T. So, 
So, that is quite straightforward. So, here the charge and discharge is uh, not elongated, but it is again going back here. So, there are 5 volt cathode which is LMNO, there are 4 volt cathode which is uh, spinel based uh, lithium manganese oxide, uh, around 3.6 volt cathode which is lithium cobalt oxide and then around 3.6 volt slightly higher 3.9, 3.8 volt lithium cobalt oxide. This is about 3.5 volt and then you have the capacity uh, profile, the voltage profile sorry, the voltage profile for LTO and graphite. So, LTO you can use um, uh, with any of this cathode, but if you use it uh, with say uh, LFP, then you get uh, a voltage it is in 3.5 volt range, it is around 1.5. So, you will get uh, nominal voltage around 2 volt. But if you use uh, graphite with say lithium cobalt oxide, you will get 3.6 volt. If you use graphite with this one, you will get much higher voltage. So, that is uh, the potential uh, if you do in the half cell configuration, you have a uh, quite good idea that what kind of voltage you will be getting in the half cell configuration, right. But uh, this is not all, I mean uh, you will have to select that this anode and this cathode whether it fits my criteria uh, which I have uh, uh, told earlier uh, the homo lumo band uh, 1 and also uh, upon charge and discharge whether the, um, the whether the uh, crystal structure is stable enough. So, during charging for example, lithium cobalt oxide if you overcharge it oxygen evaluates uh, evolve from the cathode. So, uh, that is a problem in layered type of material if you extract more lithium then the structure collapses. So, a lot of problems are there and part of these problems I have tried to introduce when I was talking exclusively on the positive material, negative material, electrolyte uh, in the earlier part of the course. So, that you must keep it in mind. So, some commercial cell manufacturers for example, this SAFT company I have given the website of them. They use uh, this graphite and you remember NCA this is basically lithium nickel cobalt and aluminum is doped to increase the stability. Here nickel is in plus 2 valence state and cobalt is in plus 3 valence state. So, here is a 2 electron transfer that is why 80 percent of nickel is there and here it is a 1 electron transfer from plus 3 to plus 4, here it is plus 2 to plus 4. So, this is a quite good uh, commercial uh, material NCA and this is commercialized by SAFT and uh, modules also have been developed along with the single cell. So, as you can see they usually work with the prismatic kind of cell which is having a parallel pipette kind of shape. And uh, they also make cylindrical cell 18650. So, this is the module uh, they have made with 6 cylindrical cell. So, there are variety of uh, this kind of uh, cell or this kind of module they usually sell for commercial purpose. Now, you know the nominal voltage is 21.6 volt that means 6 cylindrical cell uh, and this uh, is about 3.6 volt. So, they get 21.6 volt. So, remember that this is always in the even number for making this module and this is the typical module taken from their website. Nominal capacity you can get 42 ampere hour that tells that uh, you can get 42 ampere current for 1 hour, you will get 84 ampere uh, hour if you uh, have uh, uh, <coughs> reduced the uh, C rate um, or forget about it, this is the nominal capacity. Then gravimetric energy density is about 110 watt per kg that you need to know because if you are going for a uh, electric mobility, then you need to know that 1 kg of the battery what kind of uh, uh, energy uh, that I will get. Uh, so, this is sorry, this is power density, this is power density because or I have made a mistake, it could be watt hour per kg. So, please check it 
so there is something wrong here. And volumetric energy density is uh, watt hour per liter that is the space that it is taking specific power of discharge that must be specified by the manufacturer. You can see here the discharge for 30 second uh, of 100 to 50 percent of SOC using 60 C. So, you can enormously drain current, but not for indefinite time. And uh, for this module, what is the energy and power density you are getting for that? Typical mass for this module is 8 kilogram and dimension you can see. Uh, height, width and um, depth. So, this is the kind of thing you will look for when you are interested to purchase a battery module. So, 42 hour with this kind of specific power discharge, whether it suits your application, wherever you want to put it, maybe that is in a scooter or wherever, uh, whether 21 volt or 42 ampere hour this application is suitable for your purpose. So, accordingly one, two you can order from them and basically they serve the uh, defense people uh, for their typical applications. Another one is uh, graphite and iron phosphate and uh, they, are, they are cheap material as you can understand iron phosphate is cheaper, one of the cheapest cathode material and graphite is also available plenty. Uh, it is widely available in the market, but uh, as you can see it is 3.6 volt, 3.3 volt around you will be getting with graphite um, and uh, I am leaving it on you that uh, how to actually write the cell equation when it is getting charged, what is happening to lithium iron phosphate, how much lithium is taking out and during discharge how much is going back and then you can calculate the theoretical capacity of it. One of the examples or couple of examples I have already uh, referred in the uh, earlier classes. So, please go ahead and do that. I may ask as part of the assignment problem that if you have this kind of uh, configuration then assuming that you can take out the whole lithium out of it what is the capacity of the full cell that you will be getting. So, uh, do this practice and that will clarify certain ideas of yours. Many, many manufacturers they have commercialized this technology and you can explore these two sites uh, A123 system as I remember that A123 is now bankrupt, but someone else has purchased them. I forgot the name of that particular Chinese company and life backed uh, they also have the details of the cell that they manufacture and sell. It is basically cell level A123 uh, makes both cylindrical cell as well as the pouch cell. The fabrication of both of them I will be covering in next uh, two classes. You can see now the what is the voltage per cell that you get capacity. For cylindrical cell the capacity is suddenly low because you have a smaller area of the jelly roll, but uh, this is flat one and you can stack lot of electrodes. So, capacity is 20 ampere hour. Mass is of course, this is much lighter as compared to this one. You have gravimetric energy density, uh, you have volumetric energy density and specific power at up to 10 second. Uh, how much you can get out of it, these actually are specified by the cell manufacturers. Now, another uh, company probably Toshiba, uh, they are building a firm in somewhere in Gujarat in our company, uh, in our country and they have this technology. You see that it is LTO based technology, they have commercialized uh, using lithium titanate technology and uh, number of companies uh, they adopt this and this uh, LTO based technology uh, what it does uh, if you uh, use it with uh, a spinel based material which is stable this one is also very stable. So, you can charge these cells at very very fast rate you can see within one minute you have almost uh, 80 percent of the cell capacity and within 5 minutes is 100 percent uh, cell uh, is charged and uh, this uh, uh, capacity fading is also reasonably good 
and see the number of cycles, 40,000 they are reporting. This data we have gotten from their website and uh, we can purchase one or two cells from A123. In fact, I have done it and I can test it in my laboratory that whether they are telling the truth and surprisingly this is truth because they, could, they can build a lot of good quality cell. Uh, I had an opportunity to visit uh, um, Itri in Taiwan, uh, but unfortunately you know that they will never tell you how exactly they are manufacturing the cell. Uh, all the procedure etcetera, in fact I spent about one month there just to learn how uh, to get a good quality of battery, what is needed to get a good quality of the battery. like. Uh, this capacity balance, irreversible and reversible capacity balance and then um, uh, to go for the tap density and mix the different types, size range of the electrode material to have good packing density. All the engineering things as a part of the project uh, that was very clear to me, very clearly uh, they could tell it to me, but once I asked that I will have to see that in what way exactly you make this cylindrical cells with uh, such a good performance. Um, they donated a couple of cells to me, I tested in my laboratory, but they tell that this is not allowed. So, this is still a secret that how exactly they make quality cells. So, this is one of the chemistry at least we know that Toshiba uses and uh, very good quality cell they uh, can uh, make and sell in the market. So, you know that this is the heart of the thing, material is the heart of the lithium and battery technology. You need to know different types of material, how they can be utilized to get good quality of the battery. Not only that, you will have to be master on making these cells. So, engineering aspect is also important, you will have to operate very sophisticated uh, equipment where the your workmanship also matters to make a cell. If I make a cell in my laboratory, it will be having worse performance, but my best PhD student uh, when they are making the cell that is wonderful, make a, using the same material and everything. So, that means this uh, experience and workmanship that is also important. So, active materials should have high capacity per unit mass or volume of high battery capacity regardless of the adequacy of the design high capacity cannot be achieved by cathode material. So, we are looking for high capacity cathode material and LMR is one of them lithium manganese rich you can see we can go up to 300 milliampere hour per gram. A high tap density what, what I was talking about that to pack it in a uh, electrode material you need to have a good packing efficiency. So, that is important. So, the tap density uh, requires size of different types of active material so that the packing efficiency is good when you do the tip casting followed by hot cal calendaring. I will be explaining it to you. So, that is important. Uh, active material they must have small specific surface area for large surface area high liquid content because you will have to wet it with the electrolyte large amount of binders and conducting agents will be required. I am, I am pretty sure that the nanotechnology, uh, nanotechnologies they are not, uh, they will not like my uh, observations because uh, finer the particle, smaller is the diffusion length. So, it is good, but in practical sense whatever we have found that if you have a very fine particle, it itself gets agglomerated and uh, due to its higher specific surface area, it is very reactive, lot of dangling bonds are there. So, very reactive towards electrolyte reaction forms the ACI layer and then ACI layer disintegrates, fresh surface is exposed. So, thicker ACI layer forms, so lot of trouble. So, you need to have a balance between these two. It is necessary to reduce the thickness of the separator and current collector excessive thinning if you do of the separator, then if dendrite forms on the graphite, because if you do not match the P by N ratio, then you have lot of lithium and this lithium will get precipitated on the um, positive sorry negative electrode surface from the dendrite and if your separator is thin, it will puncture it and 
internal short circuit will take place. So, discharge characteristics for existing cellular phone charge discharge characteristics rate is C by 2 and that needs to be increased to 1 C. So, the rate capability varies according to the types of applications. So, if my application wants for say 5 G, uh, I need uh, 3 uh, uh, 3 C kind of discharge, then you will see your battery in the uh, mobile phone that is not performing well. So, you need to improve the quality of the battery. I know the Apple they never disclose what kind of uh, battery they use and this is one of the best quality of battery I have ever found uh, in my phone that is running for say 3 years continuously without any problem of uh, cycl cyclability. So, type of electrolytes that is important, separator is important, type of active material is important, particle size is important and electrode thickness is important. So, uh, all this you know separator thickness is important, active material quality is important, particle size as I said that is important. So, this uh, kind of total resistance uh, that is coming from electron and that is coming from lithium ion. So, ionic and electronic resistance that constitutes the total internal resistance of the battery. The cyclic life and rate performance of commercial cell that is deteriorates with time because of the increase in this internal uh, resistance due to a variety of effect. Ambient is one of them. So, they are prepared the electrolyte for use in Canada you import that cell and using it in Rajasthan in the summer time at 46 degrees Celsius, this white temperature difference it has not been, if it has not been taken into account, then your cell performance will be bad. Resistance due to electron increases at high current rate that is obvious at high charge discharge rate and contact resistance become the main factor because you will see that the tab is connected with your current collector. So, that contact resistance is important. So, it is necessary to minimize the resistance of electrical connections while maintaining a proper current collector thickness that is also equally important. Very thin current collector you take then you may face problem. Temperature characteristics I was uh, uh, saying it that you see that uh, it has been tested at low temperature this particular battery and then room temperature range where uh, it gives the discharge capacity in milliampere hour, it is quite good and high temperature is slightly deteriorated. So, to enhance the low temperature performance, um, smaller active material is preferred and electrolyte with lower viscosity is preferred because if the viscosity increases once you reduce the temperature, then uh, lithium ion uh, mobility will be affected. The increase in the reactivity between the active material and electrolyte at high temperature that is more important because they can react uh, relatively with high vigor. So, that causes a rapid decline in the capacity. So, high temperature performance that can be improved by impeding the low temperature characteristics. It is already less viscous of course. And uh, as you uh, know that I have described that uh, smaller specific surface area uh, of the active material here um, is um, may be um, important. So, the particle size is relatively large, electrolyte resistive to high temperature and thus uh, use various electrolyte uh, additives to form a stable SCI layer. So, a lot of uh, modification you need to do if you take uh, the, uh, if you have to expand the window and that is one of the problem that is why we need indigenous company because those battery should serve our country. So, they should be made according to our country's specification, not always good quality battery if you are getting from outside particular, particularly for the cold countries that may not be. Uh, good to serve the purpose what you are looking for. Energy density and power density by this time you know that uh, amount of energy it is uh, stored um, per unit mass or volume. Uh, so, energy density per unit volume is useful for small batteries 
another system constrained by volume for power storage application does not matter uh, the volumetric constraints, but the energy density plays a major role. In case of power density, this is the amount of energy released per unit time. For example, cellular phones and laptops required at 2 C, but this figure should be much higher in case of hybrid electric vehicles that I talked about. Since high power density involves release of high power in a given amount of time, it is necessary to have a high voltage and high current. So, power is I square by R. So, among various factors <coughs> affecting resistance, electrode thickness is most significant at high rate. So, thinner electrode is required, the battery becomes closer to a supercapacitor as the amount of energy that can be stored is greatly reduced. For high power density applications, I will flood the battery with a lot of electrolyte, but use thinner electrode material as a thumb rule. So, charging of commercial cell that is uh, mm, uh, quite important and uh, this is the profile that is followed. So, here I have recapitulated this uh, based on the positive electrode material and their nominal voltage, you see the charge voltage is specified here. And usually during charging a constant current charging uh, point C rate is um, actually preferred. So, you can see that a constant current uh, C C mode where the voltage during charging it increases and reaches here. So, maximum charge voltage depend on the electrochemical couple uh, whatever negative electrode you are using with this positive electrode. So, this is your stage number 1 constant current is applied, but if you are using a heavily discharged battery with death of discharge is quite um, high, then uh, you start with lower current. So, it will take little bit longer time for you to reach this voltage of course, you can understand it from the rate. For high charge current constant, volt, constant voltage phase will last longer. So, if you are using a high charge current, then this will very quickly reach to the desired voltage limit. So, this time here will be relatively small. So, stage 2 this time will be prolonged and here this current you will find when it reaches constant voltage, then this current will drop down. So, when the current is dropped down to a level of 0 0.02 C then you can stop it. So, then the battery is fully charged. So, for low charge current the constant voltage phase will be delayed because already you are taking time to reach this voltage because the current is low. So, this part will be um, achieving this part will be significantly delayed and you will see the current will remain constant voltage is yet to be achieved. So, it will take time to achieve this voltage and then this will start. So, during constant voltage phase the current decreases as you can see here because the voltage is controlled as the element approaches is fully charged state and as I said the end of charge is determined when the current reaches 0 0.02 C. Overcharging is having a problem the temperature rise as the heat is produced due to electric resistance within the battery. So, more lithium is produced from the cathode because you are overcharging it and it is deposited on the anode. So, electroplating uh, takes place if you cross the voltage limit. So, all the charger that you use in your mobile phone it has this capability that it will not go it knows that what type of chemistry is there with your battery. So, it knows that it should not cross that voltage limit which is specified for the battery. So, you can understand now that not all chargers even if you can fit it in your mobile phone, you should not use any kind of charger for your battery. You should only 
you specified original charger to charge this material and this is the reason if it goes uh, temperature is raised and uh, uh, due to the electrical resistance within the battery more lithium is produced from the cathode and it is deposited on the anode. So, structural collapse also can take place for example, lithium cobalt oxide you are not allowed to take beyond 0.5 uh, mole percent of uh, uh, lithium out of the lattice. So, it uh, um, overcharging produces the thermal energy and oxygen that oxygen can oxidize your electrolyte, electrolyte can be decomposed and uh, heat is generated. So, if the electrolyte is having lower flash point it can catch fire even. So, it can create combustible gases. So, this will destroy the battery. So, the original charger is used functional separator as I have mentioned the separator plays a major role as the temperature is increased it is clogged the uh, pores, but it is not disintegrated. So, it blocks lithium. Electrolyte additive as uh, you can remember that what type of electrical electrolyte additives that is added for this purpose. So, in the assignment you can expect question that uh, uh, out of 4 or 5 materials which you will prefer for the additives that to reduce the thermal runaway condition in a lithium ion battery. So, you will have to remember those names which I covered in my earlier classes and use of safer cathode materials that is always welcome. Cycle of life of the cell, uh, you know that uh, it is not only um, uh, the rate that is important, if you increase the rate of course, the capacity will be progressively reduced and that is known as uh, um, capacity fading uh, with the current incre increment, but also the voltage fades. You know at this capacity, if you are doing it at 2 C rate discharge, then your voltage is here 3.1 otherwise it should be 3.6. So, both voltage and uh, capacity fading uh, you can uh, achieve when you uh, increase the C rate. So, the control the C rate is really uh, important and the factors that uh, affect that is intrinsic property of material and also the design property you will have to properly design the electrode mass. Uh, uh, balance, uh, charge balance uh, between the two electrode in the full cell. Intrinsic electrode separator electrolyte that also plays a major role and as I said the balance between the uh, charge between anode and cathode. So, in the cycleability you will find two different types of profile. One is you see it's, it was reasonably good and then suddenly at one particular cycle number it drops down. This is better initially it goes down because of the SEI formation, but after that it is this rate is uh, uh, relatively less and it is uh, performing more or less ok. Although the capacity percentage is not ok, because after 300 cycles no good cell will allow you that capacity falls down as low as 50 percent. But had it been here around 85 percent, it would have been good. Anyway, so for carb A, lithium deposition at the anode, cycle life deterioration can overcome by adjusting the design. So, balance is important. That is for this one, this is due to the balancing of the capacity. But when it suddenly deteriorates after a certain number of cycles, the capacity recovery should be checked that whether at lower rate again it goes back to its original value. If the capacity improves, then the deterioration is due to inadequate design, else it is due to the core material problem with the cell. If you come across with this kind of thing, then probably delamination also can take place, you are using a metal alloy base anode which is pulverized or delaminate and then suddenly it goes back. If that is the case, then it will never at low current rate, um, it may or may not go back to the original value. So, this you should keep in mind. Cycle life of cells, uh, this is uh, related uh, to SEI formation, disruption of lithium ions within the cell that is usually caused by the resistance at the interface of the electrode 
active materials and clogging of the separator pore or depletion of the electrolytes. So, if you want to um, um, get rid of this problem, oxidative reduction on the cathode occur at relatively high voltage. You remember if I go beyond a certain voltage, then oxygen evaluates from uh, your uh, positive electrode material and uh, that uh, causes the electrolytic oxidation and um, reductive reduction also takes place in the anode uh, near the lithium potential when you are very close to 0. So, surface modification of the active material that is one way to prevent this electrolyte decomposition and also for electrolyte additives to form a stable SCI layer during charging uh, previous to lithium ions and thick electrode may result in imbalance potential between the electrodes. Decomposition reaction can be accelerated at the regions with higher resistance for higher energy density larger mass loading is unavoidable. You will have to take larger mass loading and then the energy uh, sorry resistance will go up of the electrode material as compared to very thin electrode. So, it is almost unavoidable. Now, once uh, uh, someone is mastering about the cell manufacturing they will never tell you about these details that what are the additives they are using, what kind of electrode mass balance that they are doing, uh, what kind of tap density they are using, what kind of uh, calendaring they are doing whether it is cold or hot cat, uh, calendaring, what kind of uh, uh, electrolyte mixing they are doing. You know one is the cyclic and linear part of the solvent that is used along with the lithium. Uh, salt and some additives also you can add LIBOB. So, this recipe they are patented and no commercial cell manufacturer will never tell you in their website that what chemistry they are using, but uh, searching different literatures and uh, things like that I have compiled this lecture where you will get a vivid idea that what are the problematic reg reg uh, regions and how to overcome that. Uh, so, you have all the weapons with you, but to get a recipe of your own, you will have to work on your own. So, this is the reference uh, uh, by Bennett uh, consideration of uh, estimating electrode performance that is one and the handbook of the lithium ion battery pack uh, that is also equally important and uh, most of this uh, have been taken by this to uh, uh, lecture material and also as I said go to the website and uh, see their application notes uh, to know more about this batteries. Half cell characteristics of negative and positive electrodes for determining the nominal voltage that is important. Characteristics of some of the commercial cells and I will strongly urge you to go to their website and have a look different types of battery if chemistry is available, what are the performance that they are getting in the application load, uh, how they do the mass balancing, how they connect the cells, uh, although I will uh, explain it in more details when I will be talking about the uh, module manufacturing. So, cell performance evaluation is important. So, that includes capacity, discharge characteristics, temperature characteristics, energy and power density, they do that and then they find all the cells ok for uh, selling it. So, these are the four things that any commercial manufacturer they usually do and what are the technique for charging of a commercial cell, what happens when you overcharge it and also the cycling characteristics. Thank you for your attention.